Welcome to ETH, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Here at End Time Headlines, our mission is to inform our listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. In Luke 21, 28, we are told when you begin to see all these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. And now, founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scott. I want to welcome our Facebook Live audience and now our YouTube audience as well again. Uh, if this is your first time joining me, live or on the rebroadcast of this, however you may be watching this. Again, I'm Ricky Scaparo, the founder, the pastor, and the voice of End Time Headlines, and I want to welcome you to our segment. This is a special segment today I want to talk about. It's a more of a prophetic message today in which I'll be dealing with the weight, the weary, and the watchman. Now, if my voice sounds a little bit strained today, it's because, again, uh, I'm coming out on the other end of a virus that I had uh, especially last week, and it, it spilled over into a little bit of the beginning of this week, but I'm completely over that, but my voice is still on its way out of recuperating, so it's a little bit strained, so if you can hear that, I, I apologize for that. Just pray for me and bear with me on this. So again, today we're going to be dealing with the weight, the weary, and the watchman, okay? So we're going to go a couple places here. We're going to go Matthew 21, Matthew 25, uh, Matthew 13, Luke 19, Mark 6, and Luke 21. So if you're taking notes, these are different locations uh, that we're going to be going to. Let me get a drink of water, guys, to uh, rest my throat here for a second, and we're going to get into this thing and get started. So here we go, Matthew 21, 33 through 40. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to propose a question to you uh, before we get into this thing. It's kind of the backdrop for this. A lot of people, and I've heard this throughout 17 years of serving the Lord, I've dealt with many different varieties of people, old, young, whether they've been in the church for a short period of time or a, a uh, in the church for a long period of time. And here's the one thing I hear a lot of times. Well, brother, I've heard the preaching of the coming of the Lord. I've heard this all my life. And here I am, 60 years of age, 50 years of age, 70, 80 years of age. And the Lord has not come back. And he never came back in my grandparents' time. He never came back in my grandfather's time. Uh, and he never came back in my parents' time, in their lifetime. So what makes you think that the Lord is coming back in your lifetime? Okay, so we've got all these different views, different opinions, different perspectives about the coming of the Lord. But one of the main common denominators that I hear personally dealing with this about the coming of the Lord is people will always find some form or fashion or some way to really kind of cast a complaint about the longevity or how long it's take or the delay of the coming of the Lord. And I believe what I'm about to show you is that the Lord revealed to us hidden in a parable, and, and I'm going to show you this in Matthew 21 and Mark, or in Matthew 25, that I believe he revealed to us that, that the Lord was going to delay his coming and that we should be prepared in the event, okay? Watch this, Matthew 21, 33 through 40. Hear another parable. So here's Jesus speaking parables as he did. And he said, here's another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and he built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. I want you to say far country. That's important. You can underline that word far country or that term or highlight it, whatever you want to do. It says, and he leased it to vine dressers, and he went unto, into a far country. Now, when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants. He beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first. And they did likewise unto them. And then last of all, he sent his own son to them, saying, quote, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they, saw among, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and cease his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. 
Therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes. Now, remember, the owner of the vineyard went to a far country. I told you to remember that phrase. What will he do to those vine dressers when he returns? Now, let me give you the interpretation of this parable. Okay? The landowner who planted the vineyard is God the Father. He gives it to, he leases it to the vine dressers who goes to a far country. Okay, so then the vine dressers puts in to, uh, he, he puts into position those servants, okay? The servants are beaten, they're killed, and they're stoned, and then he sends other servants, and then they're beaten, stoned, and killed, and then he sends his only son, okay? So what does this represent, okay? You've got God the Father who sends, okay, he sends the law and the prophets, and what, how did they treat the law? And the, come on, they trampled on the law, they disrespected the law, they abhorred the law, and they stoned, they killed, and they beat the prophets that went before before, okay, and then he raised up. Then he sent out what the, the disciples when he went out to the apostles. He sent them out, and and you, they were beginning to spread the gospel in the New Testament. What did they do to them? They beat them, they stoned them, they killed them. So then he sent his only begotten Son, and he and again, what does it say? He says, but. Uh, he says, again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did likewise. Then, last of all, he sent his own son to them, saying, well, surely they will respect my son. But how did they treat Yeshua? How did they treat the only begotten son of the father? Well, we know, again, by the will of God, they allowed or the, the by the will of God it was allowed for the son to go. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He endured, come on, his beard being ripped out. He being whipped by 39 lashes, being being ridiculed, being uh, being blasphemed, being spat on, but he, the, th the crown of thorns stuck on his head, uh, being, being uh, this, that, being put on the cross, being ridiculed by one thief, by being accepted by another. So he went through all these things. So this is what this represents. Okay, so again, watch this. It says, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? Friends, I'm going to tell you, when the Son of Man returns the second time, he's not coming as a lowly servant, but he's coming as King of kings and Lord of lords, and he's coming with a rod of iron. Okay, and the Bible says those, it says the, the, the nations of the, the, every nation, tribe, and tongue will look, and they will see uh, those who has the scars upon his hands, they'll know that this was the one who was the Messiah. And the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So what are you talking about, Brother Ricky? I'm talking about, watch this. That was a little bit of an extra there, but I want, again, notice it said he leased it to the vine dressers and then he went to a far country. I told you, to remember that term, far country. Now let's go over here to Matthew 25. And Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. Quote, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a, here it is, a far country. Here we go again. So you've got this same scenario of a man or a picture of an individual who's who's on a long journey traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them oh i'm i'm gonna tell you who those good servants are and what goods he delivered to them here when i get to the end of this and to one he gave five, come on, y'all should know this, he gives five talents to another, he gives two, to another one he gives one, and to each one he gives to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey, okay? Again, Jesus Christ in the book of Acts chapter one, the Bible says that when he was about to be taken up into a cloud, there was two men there. And, and the Bible says, why you men of Galilee stand here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus who you see going shall return in like manner. But Jesus told them before he went to the father, he says, it's expedient for me to go into the father because that if I don't go, that I can't leave you with 
with the comfort, the parakletos, the, the one who shall come alongside. And it's, it's expedient for me to go away. And the same works that I did, you shall do likewise. And greater works shall you do because I go unto the Father. But friends, listen, Jesus went to a far country. Come on. He went into the third heavens. He went into the heaven of heavens. And he's so far. Come on. You want to talk about how far he went? He's so far into the heaven of heavens. He's right now seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. And he's, and he's remained seated from for 2,000 years. And he's sitting there waiting until he gets the go. Until he gets the green light from his heavenly Father to go and take his bride and call them up to be with him. Come on. The book of John says, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I feel the preaching come on me. He says, listen, he says, if you believe in God, believe also in me and in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you that where I go, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be there with me. Come on, somebody. All right, so watch this. Verse 18, Matthew 25, 18. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Now, verse 19, after a long time, somebody say a long time. Look at these phrases. Far country, long journey, long time. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Oh, can I tell you? Listen, I know some people's ripped you off and they've done you wrong and they've cheated you out of this and they may have said the wrong things and lied on you and ridiculed you on you, but I've got news for you and I've got news for the devil. There's going to come a day, friend, when, the, when, the, when there's going to be settled accounts. Come on. When the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to set foot and he's going to begin to settle accounts. Oh, that's that's good news right there. So, but the Bible says after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and he settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I've gained five more. And the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And I'm not going to go all the way. He says this to the one with the two talents. But watch what he says to the one with the one talent. And then verse 24, he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you've not sown and gather where you've not scattered seed. Sounds real spiritual, doesn't it? And I was afraid. And went and hid your talent in the ground. Come on, friend. What are you doing with your talent? Look, there you have what's yours. But look, the Lord didn't want what he gave him. He want what he was going to invest in what the Lord gave him. Come on. It's not about your gifts, friends. Because the Bible says the gifts and talents of, of God are re irreversible. They're, uh, or they're without repentance. They're irrevocable. He doesn't, he doesn't take them back. He's, he's giving you that gift to sing. He's giving you that ability to preach. He's giving you that gift in arts and, and, and entertainment. He's giving you that gift uh, to do this, do that, and to, to, to sell this. And to, to be that business leader and that visionary and that builder and whatever the gift and whatever the talent is, that nurse, that doctor, that physician, that astronaut, whatever it is, that gift, that talent, and that vision came from the Lord of uh, uh, the, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. It come from the Most High who gave it to you. But my friends, what are you doing with it? Are you burying that talent? Okay, because God is coming back to settle the account. Okay, and the Lord said, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I've not sown and gather where I've not scattered seeds. So you have at least, you have, you should have at least deposited my money with the bankers at my coming. Notice it and say that with me at my coming. I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take that talent from him. And give it to him who has 10 talents. Come on. I could preach a whole message on that right there. On taking talents from those who have them. And giving it to those who are willing to use them. You know how many people has 
My God, you know how many people I know that can sing like a bird, but they won't use their gift, they won't use their talent because they're afraid? Well, brother, I don't want to step out, and what if people don't like it? What if people despise? What if I fail? What if I don't have the money? What if I don't succeed? You know, what if I can't do this? What if I? Can't? But what if you do succeed? What if you do get out there and you're being used by God? What if your voice is anointed by heaven and you begin to see lives turned upside down and see people trans? Form, see people being delivered, chains being broken, people being pulled out of this and pulled out of that, and people being set free by the gift and by the talent that God has entrusted you with. Come on, stop making excuses, friends, and begin to walk in what God called you to do. Here's what I'm trying to tell you, friends. Again, let's recap this and we're going to go on. The Bible gives us clues about the Lord's departure and it being at a far journey, a far country, a long time, come on, and it would be delayed, okay? So all these people, well, you know, I've been hearing this for years and I ain't seen the Lord come back yet. Well, if you would have studied the scriptures, you would know that the Lord told us it would be long, it would be delayed. Come on, somebody. And that there, we have a responsibility to be doing while we're waiting. Now look, I'm going to get out. Now listen to me. Don't get mad at me because I'm going to tell you something. I'm a pre-tribulation rapture guy. Yes, I'm a rapture believer. Don't get mad at me. I'll probably lose people right there. But listen, if you'll go and pray about it and you'll mature a little bit more, then you'll be okay. Because listen, I've got friends of mine that don't believe in the rapture. I've got friends of mine that are mid-trib and I've got friends of mine that are post-trib. And then there's friends that are no-trib. But we all get along. We, we all love Jesus. We're all saved by the blood of the Lamb. And we all have our names in the Lamb's book of life. But we differ on certain uh, uh on certain theology perspectives, okay? So, but here's what I'm trying to tell you. So I'm going to get on all my rapture people because I'm one of you. So if I preach to you, then uh, then you can't be upset because I'm one of you, okay? I'm, so I'm going to get, especially my pre-tribulation guys, my pre-tribulation sisters, my pre-tribulation brothers. Listen, Here's what you and I, I don't want you to become like the church of Thessalonica where your head is always in the clouds. You're always, you're, you're always looking for the coming of the Lord and you never want to occupy. Here's what the Bible says in Luke 19, 13. So he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 minus. In other words, he gave them their talents, their gifts. And he says to them, quote, do business until I come. So all the rapture people, including me, this is what the Lord is saying in this hour. Don't get hung up with your head stuck in the clouds. Yes, there's wars. There's rumors of wars. There's nation against nation. There's kingdom against kingdom. There's pestilences rising. There's false prophets rising. There's false apostles rising. There's deception rising. Uh, people are being offended. The falling away is taking place. Come on, the apostasy is happening. And, and we can get excited because after all, Lord, you said when we begin to see all these things to look up and lift up our heads because our redemption is drawing near. Yes, he told Notice that very thing, but here's what he also said, and we have an obligation, and that is we have to do business until he comes, okay? I got to get on with this. Mark 13, 32, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit deeper on this, okay? So don't you get mad at me and leave me yet. You hang in there for a second. Mark 13, 32 through 37, watch this, but of that day and hour, no one knows. What's he talking about? The coming of the Lord, not even the angels angels in heaven, nor the son of man, but only the father. Now you'd be surprised. We read this right here in the scripture, but yet you get people out there that constantly, they set dates, they'll set a day and they'll go out there and they'll get on YouTube. They'll get on Facebook and they'll say, Jesus is coming back. The Lord's coming back on this day. It's coming back on that date. Stop it. Please stop doing that. 
because you're making an idiot of yourself because, and you're making yourself out to be a false prophet because when he doesn't return on that date, everybody's got it documented on YouTube. They've got it documented on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media outlet that you're going out here and you're propagating this stuff. You're making a fool out of yourself because the Bible says that, but the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but the father. Okay, now watch this. Whew. Come on, this is good. Take heed, watch and pray. Let me say that again. Take heed. Watch and pray. Now the word heed, this is very interesting. In the, in, in the Greek, this word to take heed. Come on, this is a message to you and I. This is an end times message. The word take heed means to watch, to see, to discern, to observe, and to understand. Oh, that's good. Listen to that. Let me say that again. To watch Come on, are you watching for his return? Are you watching the signs to see? And that word see is not the same as watch. It's not it's the same as watching and looking. It means to perceive, okay? To watch, to perceive, to discern. Remember the Jesus, he spoke to the Pharisees and he says, you hypocrites. He says, you can go out here and look at the sign. Guys, listen to me right now. I live in Indiana. It has rained for three days straight, nonstop. I'm sick of the rain. I'm over it. Um, it's, it's getting ridiculous at this point, but listen, I can look out my window right now and I don't need to be a, a, a meteorologist for the National Weather Service to discern or to perceive or to see or understand that it looks like it's going to rain because I understand what rain clouds look like and I can see what it's producing upon the earth. Okay, but Jesus told a group of religious leaders of his day, he says, you hypocrites, you can stand out here in a field and look at the sky and tell all of us when a storm is brewing in the natural. But he says, you can't watch. You're unable to see. You're unable to discern. You're unable to observe. And you're unable to understand the times and seasons in which we're in. Friends, that's where we're at today in the body of Christ. We've got a lot of believers. We've got a lot of self-proclaimed Christians. We've got a lot of pastors preaching a lot of stuff behind pulpits. And we've got a lot of churches out here. We, we've got more than enough churches in, especially here in the United States. I can't speak for my brothers and sisters in Canada and South Africa and Nigeria and for the Philippines and for Australia and for uh, and for wherever else you may be joining internationally. But I know here in the United States, it is absolutely ridiculous how many churches we have. But listen, but not all churches alike in those churches. I have to ask and wonder how many are 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 heeding, are taking heed, how many are watching, how many are observing and understanding the times in which we're in. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Prayer. He says, take heed, watch, and pray. For you do not know when the time is. And then he gets a little bit, he peels back a little bit more prophetic layers. And then he says, it's like a man, here we go again. It's like a man going to a far country. How many do you Come on, you guys have got to believe by now that it is not by chance, happenstance, or coincidence that the Lord has repeated this phrase multiple times in multiple gospels and multiple scenarios. A far country, a far journey. Okay, he says, it's like a man going to a far country, watch this, who left his house and gave, oh, I love this, and gave authority to his servants and to each their work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Okay, now what does that mean? All right, here's what it means. Okay, Mark, listen, who is 
the man who went to the far country? Jesus. Who did he leave with the authority over his house? I'm going to tell you who it was. It's you and I. He left you and I with the authority. Mark chapter 6, verse 7 through, thir 7 through 13. And Jesus called the twelve unto himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. And he commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on and not to put on two tunics. Uh, he, also, he said unto them, in whatever place you enter, enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you nor hear you when you depart from there, shake the dust off under your feet as a testimony against him. Surely I say unto you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah and the day of judgment than for that city. So they went out. Now watch this. What? Oh, come on. The same mandate that was given to them by Jesus and the authority that was given to them was give, is given to you and I. Now, what was their mandate? Verse 12. So they went out and preached that people should repent. Oh, yes, I didn't make that up. That's in your Bible. It's in the New Testament. In Mark chapter 6, verse 12, their core message to the apostles when they were sent out by authority, commissioned by Jesus the Messiah before he was taken up into heaven on his long journey. Come on. And he's still on that long journey and he's still delayed. He gave them the authority and their mandated, commissioned message, core fundamental message. It says, and they preached that the people should repent. But how is it today that we somehow in the church have eliminated that core message of repentance? Let me move on. Verse 13. And watch this. And they cast out many demons. Hmm. That's interesting. We don't see many churches today operating in that either. Most churches today, we don't see demons being cast out. Most churches today, demons are sitting in the pews and they're comfortable and they blend in into the services. Don't get me started on that because I could really preach on that. But again, number one, they preached the message of repentance. Number two, they were casting out devils. And then the Bible says, and then, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. So again, come on, they were preaching a message of repentance. They were casting out devils and they were healing the sick. Come on. So again, you say, well, brother, what's this got to do with the delaying of the Lord? Listen, I, I'm going to tell you what it's got to do with the delay of the Lord. The Lord is up there. Listen, he is not nervous He's not anxious. He's sitting up at there at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. He, did you know that Jesus is praying for you and he's praying for, I, for me? That's not even correct English, but he's praying for you and I. He's praying for all of us. Why? So that we could fulfill what he's called us to do. He's called you and I. He's given you talents. He's given me talents. He's called you to a work. He's called me to a work. And if you're faithful over what is little, you'll be ruler over what is much. He's given you authority in the name of Jesus to preach a message of repentance, to turn people from hell, come on, to heaven, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Come on, to get them in the names in, in the in the lamb book of life to deliver them out of bondage to deliver them out of drugs to deliver them out of alcohol to deliver them out of pornography to deliver them out of oppression to deliver them out of the Jesus said this he's anointed me to preach the gospel and to heal the sick and to set the oppressed free that same anointing that was available for Jesus is the same available anointing for you and I this the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and I and quickens our mortal body, friends. So this is what he's called us to do while he's on his long journey and he's delayed. We're, about, we're supposed to be about doing the work and the business of the Father. Come on, Luke 19, 13. He says, do <clears throat> business till I come. You want a word? Well, brother, I, <clears throat> I wanted a word, brother Ricky. I, wanted a, I want a word from the Lord. I got a word from the Lord to you, brother. And here it is. 
Ah, do business until he comes. Yes, the Lord's going to come back. Yes, he's going to split the eastern sky. Yes, he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And if he said he's going to come back, then he's going to come back. But friends, quick, get your head out of the clouds and come on and get them on the field. What am I talking about? The, Jesus said, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and look at the grains. Look at the, 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 the field is ripe. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Okay? And then he goes over here and he says something very interesting. He says, and he commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Now that word doorkeeper, it's, it's another phrase or another term as a watchman. Now who's the doorkeeper to your home? Listen, you are responsible to be the doorkeeper. I'm responsible to be the doorkeeper, doorkeeper of my home, of my family, of my ministry, of my life. I'm the one, listen, I control who opens the door, who comes to the door. If you don't believe that, friends, in your home, listen, you have a, a bolt, you have a lock, you have a system, you have a security system. You, uh, you control who comes in and who comes out of your home through a door, okay? And he says, watch this. Let me go back up here. He says, he says, and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Come on, why, do I have anybody that's watching the door? We got to watch the door. Now, let me get to the last part here, and then I'm going to close. Watch therefore, okay, Mark 13, verse 35. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. In the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster or in the morning. I've heard preachers get up. I tell you what, the, the Bible says he's coming at midnight. No, it don't. I just gave you a scripture right there that just totally contradicted that. It says he could come in the evening. He could come at midnight. He could crow in, He could be coming to crow the rooster. He could come in the morning. Because here's an argument for you, sir. If you say he's coming at midnight, midnight according to whose who's timetable? Yours? Where are you? Are you in Eastern? Are you on Pacific time? Are you in Japan? Are you in Jerusalem? Are you in the United States? So at midnight to you might be 6 o'clock to this guy, and it may be another day for you. So again, that's ridiculous. Again, that's tradition and not truth. Okay? Now watch this. I got to get on with this. All right, here we go. And he says, I got to get up here. All right, here we go. He says, watch it for you for you not know when the coming of the master of the house is coming in the evening, at midnight, crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest, here we go, coming suddenly, he finds you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. This is in your Bible, Mark 13, 36. He says, lest he come suddenly and find you sleeping. Now this word sleeping doesn't just mean, you know, you're going to go take, you know, go to bed tonight or whenever you go to sleep. That In the natural, that's what that means. But in the Greek understanding of this, it means greater than that. It actually could, in another text of this, it means to, in this context, it means to yield to sloth and sin. Let me say that again. The word sleeping there means to get caught in or to yield to sloth and sin. Let me explain it better with this last passage of scripture and then we're going to pray and close. Luke 21, 34. This is exactly what Jesus was referring to in Luke 21, 34. And it deals with the coming of the Lord. And he, he tells you uh, all these signs will come. The wars, the rumors of wars, the, all the things I just named. You can read this in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. It's all there. The, the signs of the coming of the Lord. Luke 21, 34. Listen to what he says. But take heed. I just went over the, what that word heed was. Go back and listen to this. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. That sounds like being yielded to sloth and sin, doesn't it? He says, take heed, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and that day Come on you unexpectedly, for it shall come as a snare upon all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. 
Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Guys, listen, I'm going to pray for you right here. I hope you, I, this, I know this is some deep teaching. This is meat, guys. This is not milk. This is a lot of deep stuff. I, I encourage you to take notes. Go back, read this, listen to it again. Uh, share it with some people that you know that will be blessed by this. You can uh, do some more word studies on this. But here's what I want to recap and pray with you. Listen, guys, the Lord is on a long journey. He's been gone for over 2,000 years we know where he's at. It's not like that he's lost. We know exactly where he's at right now. He's at the right end of the Father making intercession for us. But guys, I'm going to tell you something. He's preparing to come back for a bride without spot nor wrinkle, wrinkle nor blemish nor any such thing. He's coming for a bride. He's coming for you and I. He's coming for a, a bride that's going to be prepared, that's, that's, that has herself consecrated, that has herself washed in the blood of Jesus, that is prepared to meet him one of those wise virgins that has her lamp trimmed, her, her, her wick trimmed, her lamp full, come on, and has oil in the lamp and it's waiting for the bridegroom to come at, at whatever time whether it be the midnight hour at twilight at whatever the time would be but the the, the bottom line is guys that we got to be we've got to be watching we got to be praying and we've got to take heed and know that though he delayeth his coming don't be like the servant who says the lord delayeth his coming and he goes and he becomes slothful and he begins to beat his servants and he becomes drunk so that he will come. God, and listen, you can go read that if you want to in your own time. It, it didn't turn out good for that man when the Lord showed up. Come on, to settle the accounts. So I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today by praying for you and, and just building up your faith today. The Lord is coming back. Don't get discouraged. Don't become weary in well-doing. The Lord's coming back, okay? But don't, friends, be stuck with your head in the clouds, guys. There is souls that need to be won. There's people that need to be discipled. There's people that need to be loved on. There's people that need to be pulled out of the miry clay and their feet set upon the rock and that their uh, steps may be established in their goings in Jesus' name. There's backsliders out there that turn their back on the church, turn their back on God, turn their back on the church family because they've been hurt. They've been, they've been lied on and it's up to you and I to be the hands and the feet of the gospel. We have got to do business until he he comes. Come on, occupy until he comes. Use those talents, friends. Use those talents. Come on, businessman, businesswoman. Come on. I don't care. Listen, you may not have a pulpit. You may not have a media ministry like the Lord's given me, but listen, he's given you talents. He, Listen, I can't sing a lick, but there's some people that are watching this, and you can sing, and the anointing of God flows uh, from your voice, and people begin to weep, and people begin to cry, and they start, and people begin to come to the Lord. They come into the presence of the Lord. Listen, don't give up, friend. Don't hang. Come on. Don't hang it up yet, but stay in there. Use that talent. Don't bury that talent. Take heed. Keep watching. Keep praying and do the will of the Father. Father, I thank you for those that are watching today by YouTube and by Facebook Live. As always, I want to bless them and encourage them. Lord, thank you, Father, and thank you, Holy Spirit, for this word that you've given me today to release to these people and release to this family. Lord, I pray that you would first encourage them, Lord, and, and, and edify them. Lord, let them know that they, uh, that, Lord, that they are loved, that they are are not forgotten and that those gifts and those talents that you've given them they are not they're not irrevocable that lord they still possess them and you're you're waiting on them to invest that into the kingdom to not bury it but to invest it and lord for those that have become weary in the wait Lord, as you've went on this far journey to a far country and you're preparing, you're preparing that place. If it were not so, you would have you would have not told us so according to the book of John. But Lord, I thank you that you're going to prepare a place for us that where you are, we may be there with you also. And I thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, you've called us as we wait 
for you. Lord God, to prepare our own hearts to be ready. John, uh, the book of uh, 1 John or 2 John says this, that it is not yet known that what we shall be, but we know that when you return and when you appear, we shall be likened unto you. And he who has this hope purifies himself even as you are pure. So Father, wash us in the blood today. Forgive us of all unrighteousness. Cleanse us today. Lord, if there is anyone watching this by YouTube or by Facebook that is backslid in their heart, backslid indeed. Lord God, in action, and they have just turned away from you, and they by chance, and I don't believe in chances uh, or coincidences, but I believe that there's a purpose and a plan for every season under heaven, and I believe that the Holy Spirit has purposely positioned them for this day on this Friday May 5th of 2017 to hear this message, that you are pulling them back into the kingdom, that they may use that talent that God has entrusted them to use because you need them to be in the harvest, in the field, laboring, because the harvest is plentiful. But Lord, you said the labors are few and we're to pray for the Lord to the Lord of harvest to send the labors. So Lord, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm praying to you, the Lord of the harvest, that you would raise up these labors, raise up these men of God, raise up these women of God, raise up these soul winners to go forth and do the commission of the Lord our God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, guys, listen, I believe that if you'll share this with some people that they'll be encouraged and they'll be edified, let them know Guys, about our main website, again, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. If they'll subscribe there, they'll get all these messages like this and also all of our news and headlines from a prophetic uh, perspective as well. Again, guys, uh, I'm, very aware, I'm very aware of the fact that this is, for many people, it's even outside of the United States, that if you consider this to be your church home, this is where you're fed, this is where you're equipped, uh, this is where you're informed, whatever the case may be. Again, I want to encourage you to sow into this ministry, honor uh, the Lord uh, with your giving, honor the work of the ministry. The Bible says that a laborer is worth this higher, uh, and the Lord will bless you indeed. Uh, again, we don't, uh, we will never operate in any form of manipulation. And what do I mean by that? I mean by um, the, the trickery of men and manipulation of men for dishonest gain. What that means is, again, I don't, I could really uh, dig deep into that right there in itself because I see this a lot on Christian television where in which I, you, uh, these men and these women of God will, or whatever the case, they'll get up there and they will manipulate people and tell them if they'll sow X amount of money and if you'll give X amount of dollars and X amount of days, then God will do this and he will do that and they'll put a, and they'll actually command God to do this on the behalf of these people because they give X amount of dollars. Listen, I can't do that because I'm not God, but I can tell you according to the standard of the word of God, it says give and it shall be given back unto you, good measured, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And with the same measure that you give, it shall be given back unto you. Okay? And again, if you seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. So there is a blessing, guys, of giving to the work of the Lord. And again, as always, I always want to tell you guys that we take every penny that comes in through End Time Headlines and, and I tithe it out. We give to the orphans, we give to the widows, we give to the needy, we give to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked. Uh, we do missionaries, uh, Samaritan funds. We do. Uh, we give to other uh, evangelists, to missionaries. We do all these things. Uh, so again, this is a ministry that's tithed. We, I believe in tithing. This ministry tithes, and this is why this ministry is blessed. This is why this ministry is prospered. This, but, but this ministry, because we operate in the principles of God and God blesses us 30, 60, and 100 fold. So again, I believe you're sowing into good ground. I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't believe it. And I believe the, the uh, as the old timers say, the, the proof is in the pudding. 
you know, we went from 2010 and seven years, uh, this ministry has exploded and we're reaching almost a half a million people right now for all for the glory of God. Why? Uh, number one, it's all God. Number two is because we're being obedient to what God's called us to do. And number three, we never watered down the gospel. And number four, it's because, again, because we honor the Lord with our increase and uh, with what God has blessed us with. So we love you guys. Uh, again, we appreciate all of our, our supporters, our, our intercessors, and those who partner with us uh, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, or whatever the case may be. So God bless you guys. Uh, you guys have a good weekend. Now listen, before you get off here, I want to let you know, uh, I plan on to be on, be back on here probably tomorrow, and we're going to do a special prayer segment. If you're on our, listen, if you're on YouTube, if you can, please go and follow us on Facebook. Uh, because there's some things that we'll put on Facebook that we don't put on YouTube. And that is, for one, you wouldn't even know about this if I didn't tell you this if you don't follow us on Facebook. But on Facebook, I said that we're going to do a live prayer session. Uh, and what this is, that tomorrow when we get on here probably, we're, uh, we're going to pray for you guys. You, you guys will put up your request. We're going to pray for you live. And you guys are going to agree with other individuals. This is what a church family does. Again, to some people, a lot of people, this is their church home. This is their church community. The Bible says, where there are two more gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. Listen, it's not about a, a building. A building is not the church. It's the people that make up the church. So if this is your community, this is your church, and, and this is what you call church home, and this is maybe your only church home, then again, I want to encourage you to come on here. When we come on live, you guys, you can share your prayer request, and we're all going to agree with you, Matthew 18, 19. If any two shall agree and touch any one thing, it shall be done by the Father which is in heaven, and we're going to pray and believe for your needs in Jesus name so we love you guys God bless you again thank you for joining us for this special segment we'll see you